Just, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, no, I, can why? Use. Why can't he just sit up here like, con like you know, like Kircher's wife did? Connie, why not? Because that wasn't, that wasn't cool. I got, I got yelled at, at, or not yelled at, but she said something about that. So. Well, go down and enjoy the store, Danny. See you in a minute. All right. Jeez. Two <laughs> hours. Oh, oh, okay. I My thing is for two hours now. Or ten minutes ago. So, Ready? Set 650. And three... Hola. Hello. Como esta? I like the low note. He says, like, welcome. Hola, chica linda. Well, Hola. Está bien. Uh, si. Sí. Mucho gusto. Si. Sí. <laughs> we have to start our show live, and that means we have to start doing things and moving our hands in silence. Yeah, that's always and how it starts. And then moving our hands in silence it actually becomes... A deep, Torn Tuesday. Deep, you know, 8VA <laughs> lower baritone Spanish. Bad Spanish, as a matter <laughs> of fact. And then it becomes comedy tonight. Anyways, here we are. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll jump ahead there to a Stephen Sondheim reference that you barely got. <laughs> yes, I just did a joke about something happened on the way to the forum, and you guys didn't even catch that. Fast fakers, one and all, thank you for joining us on Torn Tuesday. <laughs> hey, welcome back. This is me, Cliff, also known as Quickbeam Online. Uh, you've probably been reading and half suffocating the details of my spoiler-filled or half spoiler-filled review of The Desolation of Smaug. Go to theonering.net and look at it on the front page. But only if you dare, the first half of the review is spoiler-free. But I'll tell you what I thought of the movie. And then we have these really exciting guests that are here. I'm so very glad to have back on our show the inimitable, distinguished, oh. and most trustworthy of all traveling dwarves. Uh, uh, that's my dwarven dance. It's Doug Brochu, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. Thank you. Joined by the very lovely and very talented Miss Noelle Stevenson. Hello. There's actually an N before the S O N. It's like a Stevenson. It's a Stevenson. It's yes. a Stevenson. Son of Steven. The son of Steven. Yes. That's fabulous. Stevenson. Stephen's son. <laughs> oh, yeah. where, where does the brochure come from? I've always wanted to know. France. Is that son of, of Brew? Brew? Yeah, it's French. Qu'est-ce que c'est? Vive France. No. Quel dommage. Oh, oh. petit chouchou. Oh. I don't know what you're saying. Oh, <laughs> j'ai étudié le français 12 ans à l'école. Malheureusement, j'ai parlé un trait pour français. I what? speak. What? <laughs> que bueno? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we went from bad Spanish to very bad French. All in one go, guys. <laughs> Wait till the Dwarvish and Elvish comes out, it gets worse. <laughs> but welcome to the live show. I'm really glad to have um, uh, the wonderful young lady who came all the way from Maryland, correct? And in 2011 actually started something that you guys know and love, the Broship of the Ring. Mm. Um, a new, illustrated, very, very whimsical, funny, funny-ass, cool approach to retelling some of our favorite moments and characters from Lord of the Rings and Tolkien, and now it's Hobbits. I just tweeted your Feely and Keely, oh, your new designs. Yes. I love it. We're going to talk about Noelle's stuff and how to find her on Tumblr. We're going to talk about Beardomancy, the podcast that Mr. Doug Brochu has uh, uh, leapfrogged into our hearts. And then we're also going to talk about some Desolation of Smaug stuff <sighs> that is on everyone's Minds, especially mine. Yeah, poor no spoilers. <laughs> no, you want a spoiler-free conversation? How how long can we do this, Justin? Should we keep the first half of the show spoiler-free? Give no. everyone a warning. <laughs> then I'll be leaving. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, no, really. yeah. I'll be I'll be at it. Okay, so I have to do everything spoiler-free then from here on out. Okay. Lord I mean, you. I guess not, but it's I have read it's I read the book, so it's not like I don't know what's coming. But but at the same time, oh my. there's artistic interpretation that I might not have foreseen. There's a whole lot of artistic interpretation that you have not foreseen. I'm going to tell you now. I'll just tell you that much. <laughs> Sounds I'll like you're you really much. happy with but it. But I, I, I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, come on. Bilbo. One more time around the block, buddy. We're almost there. We're almost there. You didn't have to go as far as He just wants photo. to go to bed. <laughs> Poor Bilbo. <laughs> and all he could think of was his comfy hobbit hole. Oh, my And God. his comfy hobbit breakfasts. You know, warm muffins and sweet butter. <laughs> <laughs> Bacon and eggs, my fireplace, <laughs> hot chestnuts. You know, all that stuff that Orson Bean said to himself when he did the, the voice of Bilbo in the 77 version. Mm. There's, there's actual, like, interior head dialogue of Bilbo mm. thinking of the things he'd rather be doing. 
So he's stuck with goblins or with spiders or lost in Gollum's cave, and you'll hear him whispering or you'll hear an echo in his own head saying, my fireplace, hot chestnuts, muffins, cakes. And you can <laughs> hear him through the whole movie mumbling to himself the things he would rather be. Well, it's like, it's like his it's mantra. So it's like his chant yeah. to like keep his spirits up. It's yes, like, if, it I just, if I just think about muffins, you know, my, my spirit will be strengthened enough to go forward. The muffin That's mantra. That's what I do. The muffin mantra. Just think about muffins. Please do us a panel of, of the muffin mantra. Okay. Can we? Is that something you might cook up for us? All right. I would love I'll do that to see for you. the muffin mantra. The muffin mantra. Go Everyone has mantra. their own mantra. They muffins. His just Build pertain muffins. to muffins. Okay. Baked and goods. seed cake. All right. If you guys want to talk um, about the desolation of Smaug, um, I'm going to try to be spoiler free. But at any time you want to ask me a question, I'll try to find a way to say it with a generality. Mm. You know, if you want to ask me about what happened in the movie. Oh. When, when, when we get to that point, I will try my best to navigate around this. I will. I will. Mm. Oh. The thing is, I want to know so much, but at the same time, I don't want to no, know anything. No. Okay. I only recently saw the trailer when I went to see uh, Catching Fire. That's the first time I've seen any Desolation of Smaug trailer. I actively did not search it out. Okay. It found me. And when it did, <laughs> it was Awesome. Did it, it, did it, it hit, hit hard? It hit hard. Effective. It was an effective trailer. It was a very effective okay. trailer because okay. the whole time I, you know, there's a difference between watching it on a screen that big oh, and God. having it suddenly yeah. just out of nowhere in a giant movie theater. It's just a difference. When you actively go and say, I'm going to look at the Desolation of Smaug, you are kind of in an, an already critical mindset. But when it just yeah. okay. washes over you. During the road trip to Dragon Con, when you had constant, almost 24-7 access to the fans and conversations with fans, yeah. did they throw things at you in live chat that you didn't expect to talk about? For they were looking at marketing materials that you were avoiding. So have you found it tricky to converse with Tolkien fans in general in avoiding these? No, the, the trailer was really... Uh, I guess the trailer and its portrayal of uh, whatever is in the second movie visually. Mm -hmm. Because for me, the... Um, the style of The Hobbit compared to Lord of the Rings is just bigger. You know, in Lord of the Rings, this water jug would be, you know, just this big. It's a little more cartoony. Mm -hmm. So I, I, it's more visually, I didn't want things to be ruined for me. Right. If that makes any sense. Okay, good. It does. It does. Okay. And you, you also want to approach your movies uh, hyped up but unspoiled. There's got to be a balancing act between how a movie gets its hype, That's how true. the studio sells it to us, and how we are, you know, consuming it in the marketplace. There's a balance between the hype and us trying to stay spoiler-free. It reminds me of the conversation we had back at uh, Comic-Con uh, two years ago, telling all the people at Warner Brothers who were sitting in the front row of our Comic-Con panel with all the other costume fans around, and we said, mm -hmm. please, don't show the dragon. Don't show him on the posters. Don't show him too much. On the on the don't reveal it with the toys in the aisle eight weeks before the movie's out. Just don't reveal the dragon. And they they all lit up their little iPads in front of them. They all started t taking down notes, and they kept to that pretty much. And we have been dragon free pretty much. And I enjoyed what I saw of the dragon. Yeah, the little tease from that trailer. Mm -hmm. You know, he'll be, the voice. he'll be coming around the mountain when he comes. Yeah, and there's Smog <laughs> right in the corner. Yeah, yeah. in yeah. inside the treasure chamber. Uh, you know the close-up shot of his head. Yeah, I enjoyed it. And you, you saw that. How did you react when you saw that? It was pretty exciting. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. I mean, we got his like his eye in the first movie, and then it's like maybe in the second one we'll get like his upper torso or even his entire body. Oh, I'm so excited. That's too much. Too much. It's too much. Too much. Excitement, too much excitement is killing me. Let's like, reveal him like piece by piece because it's just well, too. I mean, if it too dragony. If it happens the way <laughs> I think it happens, we will actually be seeing. Smaug fully revealed. Do you think that'll happen now? Like in the, in the second movie? Don't... I, I, I don't know. It don't might. Tell us. <laughs> it might. But I also think he's going to perish in the second movie as well. He will be revealed. I hope and then not. he will be extinguished. Well, you've introduced the inevitability of like the dragon perishing somewhere in the oh, in one of these movies. Like we didn't. Know, oh, you're right. Like we didn't know 75 years ago that it would happen. But everybody See, has I known. I thought that like happened. smog was. That's right. Okay, like, that's so right. It's very lax about spoilers regarding gotta, that's the Hobbit. I'm trying to figure out what's your balance of info or keep me out of it. I mean, when you. Um, the I generally figure that like stuff in the books, since the books have been out for like 60 years, <laughs> uh, like 75? fair yeah. game, 75. Yeah. Close enough. Get out! Years. Get out! 
dust uh, on my bed. Layers of inch of dust on my bed. Considerably That's before I was born. <laughs> so it's like, you know, I, I still wouldn't be like, oh, such and such, this character. Oh, Gandalf. Dirty Gandalf. Gandalf, no. Dirty Gandalf. Stay, stay, stay with us, buddy. Uh, yeah, no, I still wouldn't be like, guess what character dies, especially if I knew that someone had not read the book. But at the yeah. same time, it's like, uh, that book's been out for a long time. They gotta kind of like... Gotta get with the times. But, you know, the movies are obviously gonna have to take some departures from the books to have enough material. So it's like, I don't know what's gonna happen. I don't know where the cutoff's gonna be. I don't know what I'm gonna see. Mm. And I'm excited about that. So I don't want to like hear about how it's handled until I've actually seen it myself. Right, so that's right. my cutoff for spoilers. Right, okay, very good, very good, excellent. I, I do have some, some, some questions about the movie. There are things in my mind that I go, hmm, I wonder if such and such will happen throw it this down. way. Throw it down, hand me that arrowhead and throw it down. Where's the arrowhead? Yeah, these right here. Oh, these I, are for, <laughs> these are us, I, I thought you these literally meant us. an arrowhead. <laughs> There's an arrowhead, you you just, someone's getting uh, shot in here. Yeah, I thought, <laughs> I, have, God. I was like, where's the arrowhead? Is it under the arrow water bottle? <laughs> I'm like, the arrowhead. That, um, evil, that orc arrowhead you found on your journey. Exactly. Is that what that, you're thinking? Okay, no. No, I, I expected to see it on the table. I was thinking that we have these lovely drinks and we have candy. This is Craft Services. Thank you, Justin. <laughs> at Torn Tuesday, where we give ring pops to our guests. You're welcome to enjoy it makes yours sense. if you like. I'm good. I've actually had seven ring pops today, so I'm seven pretty... Seven ring uh, pops today? No, look at this. Pretty I'm totally done for this. Mm, Christmas ring seven pop. rings about See, this is the is ring pop candy? to rule them it, all, though. Yeah, so if there's one place to eat ring a, pops, a it's special here. power. Yeah. The, the, the seventh missing ring pop from the House of Durin. Mm. That there was held by Thorin's father, Thrain, given to him by his grandfather, Thror. Let's talk about that. I can at least say what you aren't going to see in the film, okay? Can I at least tell you something that you will not see in the film? Sure. So ah! If inadvertently... It's not a spoiler, you're it's not in the film. But but by but, it, but, but, but by but by yeah. yep yep okay. but by saying something that's missing, it's a spoiler in and of itself. If Perhaps. it's integral to the it can't to be the like, a, it's it's like a double negative. It can't be like what you aren't going to see. Yeah, is this aren't. character <laughs> staying alive. You're not going to see that. What so you okay. are so going to see is a love story. I would, never, <laughs> I would not contextualize it in, any more than this. We've been given a lot of images in the marketing campaign, mm -hmm. and in last year's trailer, even from An Unexpected Journey, we've been giving images of certain things happening. It is not present in the second film as expected. That's all I wanted to say. Okay, what it, is? It, oh, certain imagery. Yeah, certain imagery and a certain character. There, who's there's stuff in the trailer. There's stuff in the trailer in the that does not show up in The Desolation of Smaug. Oh, there's that's stuff annoying. In, there's stuff in the original early material from an unexpected journey and then lo and behold they cut two films into three films and a lot of that stuff we never saw in the first film it's not even in the second film. oh so Generally either it's, it's bumped to the third or it was just cut completely and can it'll I, be in the, can, can in the I, features can, can i get around this elliptical conversation and actually mention the, the character okay yeah go for mean? it no yeah. No? Cover your ears and go like. Can you guys? Is it? I mean, because because I'm not spoiling something that's in the film. I'm telling you something that's absent. That's oh. my. Okay. You know what? what uh, we could do like can you roll with 20 it? I'll questions. Give. I'll, give. With it? I'll give. I'm I'm in. Thrain, poor one-eyed Thrain, whom we expect because we've seen the bits where he's crazed and out of his mind and attacking Gandalf. Yeah. We don't see it. Not at all. It's not there. And we thought it was going to be in the first film in a flashback. We definitely thought it was going to be in the second film because the marketing materials reused the imagery of Thrain, you know, dive bombing and doing a little jump attack on Gandalf yeah. while he's sneaking around doing whatever hmm. he's doing. And guess what? We thought it would be in the film. It's not in the film. Okay. So I haven't spoiled anything about the Desolation of Smaug. The content of that film shall remain intact. But Fair enough. Let me tell you something. It's an exciting film that is built and edited with a lot of momentum, a lot of energy, a lot of um, uh, uh, real... E escalation of energy and it's well, that's good. it's exciting it's gorgeous to look at uh, there's realizations of the physical environments which are an absolute triumph of art direction all around my hat is off to a group of digital animators working at Weta Digital for the stuff they did with creatures and spiders and the great look of the dragon looks yeah. so great visualized so well 
aside from the Weta digital folks, then there's the practical artists working with Daniel Falconer and Richard Taylor doing just the Bayorn's house and the sets and the way uh, that yes. the way that Erebor gets to look around as Bilbo walks around inside and his first discovery of what's mm. inside the Lonely Mountain. Yeah. Beautiful visualizations. Most impressive of all to me was the realm of the Elven King in Mirkwood. There's something so beautiful to see the difference between the way dwarves would live underground, yeah. the way dwarves That's, would design yeah. Moria, or the way they design their stuff underground, and Erebor. Erebor. Well, the way that elves design an underground realm is fascinating, the contrast between the, the way they do it. And the artists are so careful to show us details packed, packed, packed in every frame. You know, a, a little joke that's already on the internet is that nobody, uh, neither in Rivendell <laughs> nor in Thranduil's halls, nobody likes hand railings. They're always walking along these precipitous... <laughs> yeah. Elves! They're not going to fall. If, if an elf falls off a stairway, he deserves it. Yeah, exactly. He was marked for death. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with a... Well, yeah. They can a walk across a rope, like across a river. Yeah. No bloody handrails in any bridge or balcony or patio in either Thranduil's Halls or Rivendell. A little yeah. side joke. You'll chuckle to yourself when you see it. Yeah, and it, if so cool. dwarves fall off the bridge in Moria, <laughs> so much the better. That's just yeah. That's just more rocks to make <laughs> Moria a strong <laughs> place to live. Oh my gosh, that's super. So, did you guys like the first movie? Yes. All right. Like this is a great really? line of questioning. Yeah. Let's let's yeah, line it up, and you you tell me. I mean, that doesn't mean I didn't like it. All right. What were your issues with it? We talked a lot about this. Today. My issues were. Um, it was it was more of a I believe it was a tone it was a tone issue tone as in tone overall tone where where I understand that the Hobbit is a children's book but I think they might have uh, went too light mm, with the yeah. tone in the like Hobbit with the booger trolls yeah I'm just like so there has I, to be a balance there yeah you know, it I was for a children's book I book. wish I could have taken it a little more seriously but I uh, but with that said I do understand why it was the way it was. I can understand something of the, the tone of what they were doing. Um, there are some gross-out humor bits that Peter Jackson cannot resist. <laughs> That's just the way it is. This is the guy who didn't meet the Feebles, after all. <laughs> you know? No, really. It's, you know, the Muppets on Acid crazy film. It's worth looking up if you haven't explored Meet yeah, the Feebles. Yeah, I don't even know what that is. Oh, oh, I've never oh, heard oh. of that. So. Really? Okay. Early in Peter Jackson's career, when he was doing crazy zombie films and splatter films, he did one picture called Meet the Feebles, which was a really psychedelic, wacko parody of the Muppets gone to the furthest gross-out extreme. Huh. South Park-level humor from very young Peter Jackson and Richard Taylor doing all these puppets. They have crazy characters, some, a couple of song and dance numbers, that are really South Park worthy. Yeah. Uh, and, and if you've never seen Meet the Feebles, it's been a cult favorite that has been bootlegged forever because it's been out of print and has mm. been perennially unavailable. Mm. So unavailable. So like super cult. Uh, yeah, super so cult. cult. Yeah, it's been so unavailable. And it's nothing but w a recent story that we whispered about on the thewondering.net <laughs> that Peter might revisit Brain Dead, which is called Dead Alive, and Meet the Feebles, some of his early splatter Brain films. Dead. You guys haven't seen anything crazy until you've seen Meet the Feebles. But anyways, there's... And I thought I knew what crazy was. There's toilet humor, and there's, uh, you know, a, a mucus gun with Bilbo being shot full of troll snot. I, I, I don't like it either, to be honest. I didn't care for the, any of the troll snot jokes, and I don't care for any other potty humor or, you know, that kind of stuff in my Tolkien. Because Tolkien was pretty very careful about purging his material of stuff that was so, you know, vulgar. You know... You know, pull my finger, Cartman. It's just not going to happen in Tolkien's world. <laughs> Peter, Peter doesn't mind. He doesn't seem to mind those kinds of jokes and those kind of gross-out bits. Yeah. So, anyways. Uh, anyway. I, I'm pretty sure that there was a fart sound effect that was edited out of An Unexpected Journey. Good. And Bilbo was hiding behind the troll. Didn't that happen? He tried to grab the knife. He doesn't. And then, and then the troll goes... <laughs> He reaches behind the troll, oh. scratches his buttocks, and Bilbo goes with this, with this very strong grimace, as if there was a moment happening of great unpleasantness. I've got a funny feeling there was a Foley effect of a fart sound that may have been edited oh. out at the last minute. It explains Martin Freeman's reaction hmm. in that shot. Or he was just scared for his life. I'm just saying. 
I'm, I'm just saying. saying. <laughs> no, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> we, Here's the real question. Okay, come with it. Is Bjorn actually Sonic the Hedgehog? Or were the pictures just very um, no. exaggeratory of his no. features? The pictures, didn't, <laughs> the pictures didn't even represent what he looks like with this mane of hair. Okay. I'm no longer scared of the, uh, you know... Uh, the Joseph Mullet, you know, scary southern Alabama look from Bayorn. I'm not... It's not even that. What I have seen, without spoiling it, is that the design of him standing up, turning around in the room, and you actually see what he looks like full around as he turns and walks and talks to people. You appreciate the design of the whole thing Good. as an animalistic type of, of motif in his style. As it should be. It is so very... Yeah, it, it is... Well, um... Ursine, rather. Ha -ha. But um, imagine if a bear were kind of combined with a Rhodesian Ridgeback. You know, that breed of dog that has a yeah. noticeable ridge? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but then it's just a little bit more exaggerated, that tuft. It doesn't even look at when all When he gets like angry, he goes, <laughs> and nothing and at all. Like a cockatiel? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, Bjorn's <laughs> angry. Uh, <laughs> Bayorn is so extraordinarily cool, he ends up being too brief, and I would like to see more of him. I would love to see more Bayorn, and uh, well, hopefully we'll see more yeah. in the extended editions and in the third film. Yeah. But um, there's like all kinds of people mistaking plot things uh, from looking at Lego toys. People are now calling me and texting me images of, look at the Lego set that I saw on the shelf at Toys R Us. It looks like Bilbo gets held captive in Lake Town. Oh, save Bilbo from jail, which is the way the toy set is constructed. That doesn't happen in the film. It's, <laughs> but people are thinking that this is a spoiler. They is really it, are. Wait, so there's actually a Lakewood set that has a, com a, a prison, whole, or is it... There's a little prison cell built into the Lake Town Lego set. Well, I think they're probably just like, there's a prison in this in movie, the there's Lake Town yeah. in this movie, why don't we just combine kids. them together, yeah. Yeah. I don't care. Well, uh, yeah, I'm looking, for, I'm looking for the spoilers from next year. I've got some accidental spoilers where people thinking that Bayorn is going to show up at certain scenes in the third film, which is not true. It's just suggested by the presence of Bayorn in the Lego set. Yeah. Hmm. You know, it's like the toy companies are not spoiling the film. They're just trying to do weird things with packaging. but To make you buy them all. Well, That's really <laughs> what they're doing. It, once upon a time, you could look on the back of the soundtrack, and it said Qui-Gon's funeral, and you're like... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was it. That did happen. <laughs> <laughs> so now I've got the new. Hi, sorry, Bilbo. I love you, but hold tight. Oh, Bilbo! Look, I want to look, look, at this. look at the titles on the back of the Desolation of Smaug soundtrack. Do you see anything that's a dead giveaway, like the Feast of Starlight? Well, that doesn't give anything that sounds away awesome. at all. It is. It's a lovely piece of music, and it, it has. Actually, it's going to get a lot of attention when the film comes out. You guys will understand why. But um, there's no hmm. big spoilers there, like you know. I wish I could talk about the film, but <laughs> I, I have One to more week. <laughs> it's it's funny it's though that I can see a bare bones plot line just based off the names, but that's because yeah. I I know. Yeah. Oh, well, well, there's also the incorporation of some chapter titles that have been around for 75 years, right? The, mm -hmm. the elves live up to all expectations. Yes. The elves live up to all expectations. That's yeah. all I wanted, though. The elves Whatever. Do, the that's, elves that's all I wanted. Live up to all expectations. Stars the 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 concept of different races being uh, uh uh here's a spoiler that's not a spoiler at all i have seen my first black people in middle earth what yes there are residents of lake town who are multi ethnic what which is a fascin yes keep in mind that professor tolkien wrote all of his stories to be really northern european mm. and anglo centric yes. yes specifically anglo anglo centric this is his late 20th century attitude towards putting a mythology in England. They're going to be white. So there are no white, nothing but white folks. But then at this point, it's like, but, but what happens to them? You know, by the time we get to the trilogy, like there is one non-white actor in the entire Lord of the Rings trilogy. There's one, and you can see him for like a second in yeah. one scene. Yeah. It's just like, where did they go? Yeah, where What happened they? to them? The, I saw did they go with all the women somewhere else? I thought I saw a couple else? of Maori guys on the boat when the... Uh, when the uh, Southron, uh, yeah. uh, when the uh, when they come riding up and and I'm forgive me for saying this, but back to Lake Town. Lake Town seems to be a more interesting melting pot of ethnic really cool. of ethnicities that I think is a super cool idea and a whole interesting development. I didn't mention it in my review because I was I was just a little bit too flustered with other story <laughs> changes. But you're talking about some fundamental changes that are happening from 
Tolkien's world and the way we relate to it. And now we're going to see some you know, more interesting approaches in the narrative for that Fran Walsh and Philippa Boyens and Peter Jackson are now giving us. Uh, so that's, you know, that's not a spoiler, but yeah. you, you, your eyes will be opened by, oh, this is this, and, and those people are there, and this is happening, <coughs> and, and wow, okay, ho you're in a whole new land of storytelling. Just trust Peter, you'll have a good time. <laughs> if you oh. trust Peter, you'll have a good time. If you, uh, if you are... <laughs> Seeing anything. That I'm, is, I'm yeah. very tricky. I did. I, I, didn't. <laughs> I didn't know that. Uh, I mean, just I dwarven right. Stonewall. <laughs> dwarven Shut Stonewall uh, slash conversation diversion tactics. So Turn into a statue. Like, the party Thranduils at the parties and stuff like that. Like you, there was well, so much cosplay there. Party Thranduil. That's her. Yeah, but there was so cosplay. Did like, you dress up and do party Thranduil? Well, Thran it. Thranduil was. Uh, he was in the first one too. Thranduil. I would. She had no idea. Only if, only if it's at the country club. <laughs> In your cosmos, he would only be partying at the country club. Uh, right? No, no, the party king is like uh, like a separate broship thing. It's like a, <laughs> it's a different. That was another. That was another thing. It's not quite. Yeah, it's it's like some people are like, oh, that's the broship, like the throndel with the with the party shades and stuff. But yeah. it's uh, a. Yeah. I don't actually know how that happened. I don't remember. I love the it's way just you, a sidebar. I love the yeah. way that your friend will has much darker eyebrows than Legolas. That's love. He's, I got, love. he's got he's got eyebrows like this big. It's, I know. This big pace. He's got like the I world's biggest it. eyebrows, and I was like, what if they tweeze his eyebrows when he plays Thranduil? I was really worried. I didn't want him to tweeze his <laughs> eyebrows. I love his eyebrows, and then they let him keep his eyebrows, and I'm just like really happy because he's got his like long silvery blonde hair, and then just like bam eyebrows. Really happy. I just really over oh, I, I yes. love I love the Jerry Garcia glasses that you have on Gandalf. I just love <laughs> I love the way that Gandalf is represented. You guys where can, where's the easiest way for fans to check out Broship of the Ring on your Tumblr? Uh there should be a link on the sidebar um, that is labeled conveniently the Broship of the Ring. Mm. If you click on that, it will take you to a list of all of my art that I've tagged as the Broship. I also have a Lord of the Rings tag, a Hobbit tag, all kinds of art. Broship, Lord of the Rings, Hobbit, everything. Well, when someone arrives at Tumblr, what's your name that they search for first? Uh, what? Noel Stevenson. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a YouTube? Is, should they search for Noel Stevenson? All right, my Tumblr name is Ginger Hayes. Ginger Hayes. Ginger Hayes. Hayes. Tumblr .com is where it. I am putting that's my it. drawings. Absolutely. So that's Ginger Hayes. Ginger Hayes. Yeah. Yep. No. You couldn't get that on Twitter. What? You didn't get that. On no, there's a stoner who took my name on Twitter. Yeah, like Ginger Hayes, Ginger420 or something. I'm so mad. <laughs> People tweet at them by it's accident all the time, and they tweeted like three times. I'm like, dude, come on, give me your, give me your Twitter account. Have Too you busy. talked to him? And they're like, no, don't no, I. no. It's not a big deal. Oh, okay. I'm just like. <laughs> well, Doug has a blue check mark now. He might be. Able to Oh, yeah, I've heard that. I've heard that people with, with blue check that? marks get get things to happen. Yeah, it's totally not a can, misconception. Can I can I can I get a favor from you? <laughs> Ever since getting my blue check mark, my life has totally fallen blue check mark. into perfect <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, you You've your, ascended. You've taken your yeah. place your, among the elders. Your bank won't charge you overdraft fees now. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I don't deliver. I don't have to. Pay someone brings you like a warm muffin in the morning every day, and I have a cup of coffee. I have a muffin. A a servant. Now it's the reality. Bacon and you just say muffin and it appears Hot before chestnuts. you. Warm muffins and sweet butter. Just another perk of the blue check mark. If only Bilbo had had a blue check mark. I know. Did you expect the uh, uh, party Thranduil to take off? Um, I thought it was really funny, and I thought that other people should think it was funny. So I, I'm glad that it did. I don't remember quite. Like I said, I don't remember how that happened. It was like it was his first trading card got released. Like the very first. I'd been waiting for this appearance of Thranduil. Because, like, I really like the actor who plays him, and I'm, like, waiting for Thranduil. And then it comes out, like, the, this this trading card is leaked of him. And the description, just some, like, line in the description is just, like, no one can throw a party like King Thranduil. <laughs> and it's just, like, that's hysterical, right? That's just, that's really funny. I'm just, like, party <laughs> elves in the forest. They're, like, cut off from all the other elves. They don't they don't really socialize with the other elves. They just stay in the forest and throw parties. It's so true. So it's just, that like, it's exactly what they do. Yeah, so obviously he needed a pair of Kanye West sunglasses and some glow sticks and a red solo cup. And that was just, like, naturally what had to happen. I didn't even... Like, it wasn't even my idea, even, really. It was just, like, the natural thing that must happen as determined by the universe. And I was just... I just <laughs> went with it, you know? And, so. yeah. And in action... <laughs> 
Party Thranduil is a sight to be home. Oh, man, it's great because it's like you can put so much work into like this elf costume, you know? You can make like a really good, accurate elf costume. <laughs> yeah. And like everyone will be impressed and you just throw on a pair of shutter shades and, and it's, it's like, it's a costume. whole new costume. I mean, there was one... <laughs> he was all like past the rafters. He was so tall and slender. And wow. then he was at the dance party, just sauntering around. <laughs> and I thought to myself, I, I'm way, he's way too cool. I, I can't even be within a 30 foot vicinity of him. He, he does throw the best parties in Middle Earth. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Who was dressed? Do we know who was it who was dressed as? Mm. We, do we even know, Justin? Did you there get. There was a whole set of fans. Really? Con, who you was. just met? Oh, yeah. Yeah, like... Here, oh, I have something. I've met a ton. Not even at Dragon Con. I met him at, like, starting at, like, Emerald City last year, I think. I had yeah. two party thrundles, and they both had elks. So one had a scooter with, like, an elk head on it, and one just had, like, a little, like, a little, like, stick horse, like, <laughs> elk. That also had shutter party shades elk. on, I think. <laughs> and they were just, That's like... Great. Yeah, no, that happened really fast. Uh, really this is for you, by the way. This is... There are riders of Brohan there. <laughs> And they were throwing out oh my all God. of these. And I saw this on my desk when I was <laughs> packing my bag for today. And I said, oh, no well deserved this. <gasps> so yes. there you go. They were, Thank I mean, they you. had banners. They had a whole thing. Yeah. Riders of Brohan. Riders of Brohan. Oh, how cool. And they were Dragon even, Con. and they were even, there's even spinoffs of that. There was a, there was a party Eye of Sauron there. I saw it. Yeah. That was my favorite it was, one. Because yeah. it was just one, that was cool. I one that. lens of yeah. a shutter shade. Yeah. Giant lens. That just was. Just one. It was great. Mm-hmm. It was brilliant. It was super cool. It's brilliant. To, to build, build that design and build it from Yes. Scratch. Yes. I love it when fans show up at conventions with these homemade surprises. <laughs> your, your homemade and really, really effective costume of the real version of Finn yeah. from <laughs> was great. I love that kind of creativity. Yes, well, thank you. What was the last time you did a cosplay? or ha What did you do? Well, geez, I feel like it was like Hawkeye for... Uh, for yeah. Avengers Hawkeye? For, yeah, for the Avengers. I dressed up, I made myself a Hawkeye costume. Yeah. Spent a while on it, mm -hmm. uh, it was, even though it was like duct tape. Um, mostly. I still spent a while on it. And then I would go to the theater to watch the Avengers and I was the only person in costume there. And I was like... Oh, dude. Come on, man. Pissed off Jeremy Renner sets his jaw know, and yeah. aims with surety. The same surety as Bard the Bowman should aim. <laughs> we hope. We hope. Unless One the script help. has been changed. <laughs> Unless <laughs> Never, I mean, at this point, I have no idea. How does it feel <laughs> that you created something that people actually cosplay? Like, oh, it's really cool. It's amazing. It's just like... Suddenly it's a real thing, and it's like walking towards you, and I like see it, and they <laughs> see me, and I'm like, <laughs> no, it never gets old. Yeah, it must so, be. Anyone watching this, come cosplaying as something that I drew, and I'll like scream, maybe faint. <laughs> That's awesome. Dance around a bit. It's great. <laughs> Just do some dancing. It's There's gotta be like walking in a room and seeing someone reading your favorite book. Uh -huh. Something like that. But like, if you also wrote your favorite book. That's true. And they that were wearing a costume a from face, it. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> that would be what it is like. Yeah. No, I can. <laughs> I, it's the closest thing I can think of being a Weta artist or Peter Jackson. Like, you know, you created something. Now people are spending money to make. It. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> yeah. So they're like, y you know that they've like looked at that drawing and they've like determined how that would work as like a costume, like where the seams go, like what the exact color is. And it's just mm. like, that's really cool mm. that someone like did something, put that much work into something using like these lines that I drew in like half an hour, you know, like that's, that's, I think that's the coolest part. Very cool indeed. I love it. I'm going to get to some of the questions that we're getting live oh, from our oh. fans in the chat. That's right. Um, I've been distracted no, by this the whole we, time. We have not posted the official fan email address for William Kircher, but we will post it immediately. Uh, thank you for checking in, Stargate Geek. And hello, TF <laughs> Drums. Hello, Gwen Grimm. Hello, Edu. Hello, Dwina. Oh, and look, there's Idril, Idril number seven. And a lot of other really excellent... Oh, good night, Duena. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Thanks Hello, for goodbye. <laughs> Jinx. Whoa, Jinx, make Whoa. a wish. Is that what you do? I'm just saying. Okay. All right. Oh, anyway. Going along with it. I was just going to say, when I did see The Desolation of Smaug, I did not see it in high frame rate. I will be on the midnight showing coming up. I just saw it in regular 24 frames per second 3D. The 3D was quite fun. Really quite fun and very cool. <laughs> 
especially the big floating bumblebees in Bayorn's house. Nice touch. Nice little bumblebees. Simple, simple things. Do like they drink that. mead? Um, you can uh, you can infer that there's some around. Okay. <laughs> there's no direct what is a party? In this movie. What is a party without without there's mead? Oh, yeah, Smirkwood really. party ain't Did no you party. Say mead? Is that the only mead thing that? The, them? Is yes. that <laughs> oh, what did I say? I was making a joke about weed because oh. you know oh. because of Gandalf. I didn't get that in the bro ship and yeah. you know well, this, weed and mead. They're both important to any any good party. Yes, they are. I agree. We need <laughs> mead. And you know what? There's Weed. our next porn <laughs> t-shirt. There's our next t-shirt designed for the one we've that. Weed and mead. <laughs> <laughs> we would never be able to get away with that. Well, hello, everyone in the chat room. You can put, like, pipe, like, in... in yeah, old Toby. Yes. Old and, Toby. And Bjorn's mead boobs. Mead and, and, and pipe. Weed and the weed. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden, Bilbo talks like, you know, Burgess Meredith and Batman. Yo... Have got the finest weed in the South Valley. Yeah. Oh look, it's the torn hotline. Let's find out who's. Let's find out who's on live with the One Ring .net. Hello there. Yes, hi. Hey, who's calling? This is Tajik calling from Ottawa. Canada. Hey. Oh well, hello Canada. Hello. <laughs> oh my God, all of our friends from up north in the Great White Way. Hello, how are you? The Great White North. I'm what? doing. It must be frigid cold up there. Not that bad yet, no. It gets frigid when we're at minus 35. <laughs> Woo! Whoa, that's bad. I lived in Chicago for a number of years, and I do remember that wind chill of 20 below. Oh, my that's, God. Sounds awful. Well, I'm, I'm sorry Glad to say, live here. I, hate, I hate to spoil things, but, um, you know, uh, we've had, uh, we just had the Berlin premiere uh, yesterday. I don't know, did you see any of the coverage we had of the Berlin premiere? And uh, Luke Evans actually revealed that uh, there's a shot of him playing his ancestor, Girion, Lord of Dale. And you thought that was a different actor who was playing Girion, but they actually took Luke Evans, put him under thunderous makeup and, and prosthetics, and made him look like someone else, and they put him in those scenes. Wow. That, yeah. And, and you actually I see a shot of him in the extended version of uh, An Unexpected Journey. Do you not? I've not seen that yet. Oh, hello. Okay, no spoilers there. It's been out for... Yeah, no, I, I don't care. Yeah, you can you can spoil that all day. Oh, okay, okay, cool, cool. So, hello, Ottawa. How's how, how things going? Yes, hi. Things are going very well. I saw the advanced screening of uh, Desolation of Tomorrow last night. Oh, you did? Okay. So what we like to hear. Nice. All dressed up in my Hobbit gear. Uh, I won a free T-shirt. It was a really good night. Yeah. Oh, super cool. That's really great. That's great. Is it? Is yeah, it? I'm it sad to say though that up in Ottawa there were only about seven people in costume in a theater that seated over a hundred. So I don't know. Ottawa had to get his cosplay on. That was better than you did. <laughs> yeah. No. At least we're the only. At least we're the only Hawkeye in the theater. The only Avenger in the theater. <laughs> No, that was great. No, good show. You know, anybody who brings it, just, you know, just go big or go home, like Nicole says. Or if we have a cosplayer friend, and she's always the first person to say, you know, uh, go big or go home. So, well done on the opening night. Last question, uh, my friend, before I let you go off the call. What yeah. would you say about people having to brace themselves for a whole new experience of J.R.R. Tolkien? Oh, definitely. This is, uh, you know, this is taking it to another level. Hmm. You know, an unexpected journey was unexpected, but I'd, I'd say this desolation of smog was even more unexpected for me. So many unexpected things. I'd like to hear that. Well yeah. said. That is perfectly said. You have, <laughs> you have crystallized the zeitgeist, which is going to take over fandom for the next two or three weeks. I love you, man. Thank you for calling Definitely. us. Thank you. Excellent. Thank Good you. night. That gives me well a happy done. squeak. Well done. That's excellent. He said it. I couldn't say it any better. No. <laughs> My gosh. I, I love this. Okay, guys. You know how to call. Um, uh, Justin is uh, typing in the for Frodo number to uh, join the <laughs> call. And you can Skype. You can call us. Join the Torn Hotline. Um, let's see. Did someone ask for a grand? Okay, you're going to get a grand. Grand. And then you've just gotten one from me. Anybody else want to join? No? Okay. There you go. And. <laughs> can you say it backwards? Well, I'll give you. I'll give you. I'll give you grand and pig Latin. Grand gay. How about rond gay? There you go. Grand and pig Latin. You've got it. Just, you heard it here. First. <laughs> well, I wanna. I wanna talk about where the whole hexology is going. At this point, 
without even seeing the Desolation of Smaug yet, I think soon fandom is going to have to start talking about how Peter is going to build all six films together of a piece. Ultimately, when next year's film, There and Back Again, is out, we will have the complete mosaic in all the pieces. But I, I'm starting to sense, now that I've seen the second film in the Hobbit series, I'm starting to sense that he's trying something new. That and is what I like to hear. Yeah. I think that was my main complaint with the first mm. one, okay. is that it was retreading a lot of the same ground as we already saw in the mm. trilogy. So it's like, oh, they're on a mountain and things are falling on them. Like, oh, now they're underground with goblins and like, you know, we're running from wargs in the meadow. We're, we're in Rivendell. And it's like, we didn't really see that much new stuff. We saw like, we saw like at the very beginning, we saw new stuff. We saw like... Yeah. We, we saw some new stuff, but it wasn't enough. It was mostly in, like, the first five minutes. Mm -hmm. So I was, like, I really just, I felt like I'd seen all this, and I want to see. That was why I was so excited about mm -hmm. the Mirkwood Elves, because yeah. they're elves. We've seen elves, but we haven't seen these elves. Oh, yeah. And yeah. they're going to be, like, different from the other kinds of elves. So I'm, like, I'm very excited now, especially, like, hearing that. So that... You may, you may also, yes, you may also be um, intrigued to know that I was really, really, really pleased uh, with the advances in... Uh, thematic music and thematic uh, leitmotifs that comes from Howard Shore. Mm. When I heard an Unexpected Journeys soundtrack, I thought myself uh, felt shortchanged a bit that Mr. Shore didn't deliver any more grand new themes for things except for the obvious dwarf theme yeah. for the Misty Mountain song. Mm -hmm. And that song was actually written by Plan 9. It wasn't even a Howard Shore theme. Hmm. He took that theme that the, the dwarves sang and he extrapolated it in many beautiful ways with the orchestration. But here now in the second film, Desolation of Smaug, you will hear more interesting and new pieces of music. And you're like, ah, good stuff, Howard. You're bringing it. He's really bringing it. I'm really glad to say that um, the Lake Town, when you arrive in Lake Town, there's a really cool theme for Lake Town. Like when you arrive in Rohan, there's a cool new musical theme yeah. for being in Rohan. That's my favorite theme uh, yeah, and that yeah, it's, recurs throughout it's Lord great. of the Rings. And there's a, there's a new theme for this place in Lake Town. And um, uh, Gandalf's theme, which you may have been familiar with from all those movies <coughs> ago, gets, you know... Uh, changed and, and, uh, and reiterated in a new way. There's some really cool stuff going on um, with, the th with the soundtrack. So it came out today, coincidentally. Our friends at Water Tower Music got us involved in doing a little thing. We did an unboxing video. You guys may have seen it, but they asked us to open up the soundtrack and do a little video at their Ooh. offices. You guys check this out and take a quick look. The whole brand new special edition of The Hobbit Desolation of Smaug. Any spoilers? Comes comes with a downloadable free I'll app. Look at it. And you take the app from Warner Brothers there and you, you float your iPhone right over and the little pieces of music that are in here come to life and they start to play on, on your, your phone? phone segments of the music sheet that you hold mm. in your hand. Take a look. Here's a pull out sheet right here. And there we got go. talking yeah. about Lee Pace's eyebrows. We gotta talk about Howard Shore's eyebrows first. Are his so. better though? I mean look um, at look, this. Look at, look, at. look at these eyebrows. That is the contest is whose eyebrows are more cray cray. I mean his might be a little bit more like like trimmed, like neat, yeah. but they are Shore has very thick. Man eyebrows. Who's got cray cray eyebrows? Howard Shore or Lee Pace? Ladies Maybe it's just like in the contrast with his like beautiful elven face, but I I, I still declare Throndil the winner <laughs> yeah, yeah, of, of the I'll eyebrow competition. Of the eyebrow, <laughs> of the eyebrow contest. <laughs> oh, I just missed another call from the hotline. Oh no! Uh, oh, is this his handwriting? Ooh, excellent. Um, yeah, that is. Do you draw to Lord of the Rings music? Do I? Yeah. I have not done that. Like purposefully, I'm sure that like you know Annie Lennox came on at some point while I was drawing something, but nice. no, it's not something that I have to really like get myself in the. Well, actually, most of a lot of those I drew while actually watching the movies. So technically, I guess you could say I did it while listening to the sounds of Lord of the Rings. How do you decide what uh, hipster terms that goes yeah, to each character? That's exactly what I wanted to. T since the audience can't hear Justin's questions in the background, I oh. wanted to bring us up to the microphone here. Putting together the broship of the ring. If you guys haven't checked out uh, her work, Noelle's stuff is really, really funny where hipster characters are recast into Lord of the Rings characters or vice versa. I don't know how to say it. But how did you come about this? It's a stroke of funny that I never thought of. And I <laughs> love it. It's, I really do love it. So what inspires you to put certain hobbits or certain you know, dwarves or, or elves and certain hipster type of characters? It's so funny. I love it. 
Well, I don't think there wasn't like a whole lot of thought that went into it. Like the same with like Party Throndle. It wasn't something that I like had to think about a whole lot. I was just like, well, there are these guys like going on a journey. It's almost like they could be like modern day guys going on a road trip. What would they be like if they were in the modern day? So that was 100% of like my planning that I did for it. And I drew the three hunters first. So I drew Aragorn, Legolas, and Gimli. I was like, Aragorn, he's like this like outdoorsy guy. He's going to be like a hiker, like a really like earthy, like he's always outside. He's like a park ranger probably. Eternal like, scruff. Yes, eternal man. scruff. Like, like he that. wears like <laughs> yeah. flannel. He wears <laughs> denim and like big old work boots. And then, like, <laughs> you know, Legolas is like, he's a prince. So he comes from a gated community. Uh, and <laughs> so he is a preppy. He wears like a, a green polo and khakis and he's, you you know he's not gonna get it dirty because he's like magic so you know it works for him <laughs> and uh Gimli like Gimli uh, he's a tr he's a trucker I, I don't know what the like what the logic for that was it just said it seemed to work with him really well he has like a trucker cap he has his uh his t-shirt that just says ale across the front <laughs> um, that's just that's just who he is and then uh, as soon as I posted those first three Everyone was like, "Do more," and I was like, "Okay," and I did more, and Here I did. We go. I did every. I did all the rest, like the hobbits. I'm just like, they're hipsters, man. They're hipsters. Like, <laughs> they just are. They're like foodies. Uh, yeah, they're foodies. They like probably like grind their own coffee beans in some kind of fancy and <laughs> coffee grinder. Yeah, like the alchemy. You know, they just want to be it. left alone with their like Victrola and like listen to their. I don't. They don't even have Victrolas left, so they're like ahead of their time in this case. But you know. They're, they're, they're hipsters. Yeah. And uh, who am I leaving out? Oh, Boromir. He's just a bro. He's just, he, he's a nice guy. He has good intentions, but he's, he's a bro, you know, so he can kind of step on some toes or be like insensitive sometimes. So he's got his like cut, popped collar going on. He's got his big old shades. Yeah. World building. Even from a person who does parody, I, I love the fact that Noel actually pays attention to world building. Check this out, okay? Sauron, in this version, is the <sighs> evil business tycoon who nobody has seen for years. He lives up in a skyscraper with a big neon eye logo up at the top. And he's designed a super high-tech ring, <laughs> okay? This would be the one ring, wouldn't it? Which will let him access and control any tech devices that he wishes. However, he loses track of the prototype. The little shade of Tron and Flynn <laughs> going on here. I love it. Okay. Loses track of the prototype and it ends up in the hands of some stoner college kids. I love where this is going. So tell me tell me where it goes from there. All right. They end up going to bars and <laughs> yes. trekking across Middle Earth. <laughs> uh, give us the setup for the Mi is that Moria. middle America it is well see the Mines of Moria one I actually did like a four page comic for that one yes, so the Mines of Moria the the is a bar and grill that Gimli's <laughs> family owned before it was kind of had a hostile takeover while Gimli was away and he doesn't know this so they show up and it's been overrun with all kinds of unsavory types that yeah. Gimli did not expect he's like oh you know gonna hook you up 20% discount you know as much beer as you Bison can drink burgers. happy hour all the time the and then Moria he shows up and, grill. and there's all these like bikers here these really like rough guys that he doesn't know and they hate his family and stuff and then it's like results in a huge <laughs> bar fight you know and uh in the comic it's like you know they have to they're fighting all of these bikers and then gandalf sees the bouncer coming in and the bouncer's this huge guy uh and he's like oh no the bouncer we have to go and everybody runs out of the bar and they cross this like tiny little footbridge to get to the parking lot where their van no is railings. With no railings. There's no railings in Dwarven Kingdoms either, <laughs> much less Elf Kingdoms. But, but the, it's a tiny little footbridge, and the bouncer comes out, uh -huh. and Gandalf, like, turns around with a... He's got a pool cue, and so the staff... That's what it was! It was a pool cue! And he starts threatening <laughs> the bouncer with his pool cue. He's like, guys, run, get in the, get in the van. And uh, he squares off with the bouncer, and they both, like, get knocked off kilter, and they fall into this tiny little creek at the <laughs> bottom. They just, you know, they just... It's not very deep. He could just get right back out, but everybody gets in the van and leaves, and he's like... <laughs> pokes his head out and he's like, do they just leave? And then he like looks down and his shirt, which has been gray, has been washed by the water that he fell in. And he's like, my shirt is white. <laughs> Whoa, I didn't even know that. That's so cool. And so that that is how the Mines of Moria happen in it's the land of the bro ship. In the land of the bro ship. I love it. I love <laughs> it. It's very funny. Thank you. Thank you for bringing, do we've got some bits <laughs> to show? Uh, uh, did you have any cool stills? Have any characters that you can show while we're here, Justin? Oh, Lord love a duck. I <laughs> bring them up on the iPad. We could bring them up on the iPad, yeah. and then we could just turn them. Yeah, we could bring them up on the iPad, and we could just show people. You How know, does that work exactly? Well, we. What is this, this technology? Oh. What is this crazy technology? I saw the uh, 
all the, the poster ads that they have, there was one of Legolas, and he's got a bow and arrow, and he's... Is that the one where he's, like, looking over his shoulder? Yeah. Like flashing his yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. No, like, you big look, fan. Yeah. Here we go. He looks... Is it looks that, a lot like Jeremy Renner. Just was, take a look at it. I did not notice that. That poster is the first time that a male action hero has been in female pose. Is that the first time, like, ever? Is that, like, a fact? I can't find any other posters where uh, the, the guy is, like... Yeah, no, it's you, great. I mean, <laughs> I, I found your artwork so fast. You do a single Google search for the word Ginger Hayes as a combined word, and it pulls up immediately your Tumblr, right? There, there. we go. Oh, and there's Numi, Numi Repos. Do you admire right. that? So, this is, oh, here's some cosplayers, Burship okay. cosplayers. It's, that's Legolas and uh, Arwen. They made these, <laughs> they made these uh, coffee cups for themselves that are like have, it's, it's just, it's, that was like the the finishing touch. Like they could be like normal people otherwise, but that's because, that's well, what makes it great. We have to understand that hipster Arwen grinds her own beans. <laughs> and she <laughs> looks course. down upon the hobbits for going to get to Starbucks. <laughs> oh, this is this is going. I don't know how that happened. All right, here's some um, bro ship dwarves, Feely and Keely. Yeah. Uh, they are. Is that know, a Thor's hammer on it? Yeah, I figured they would the be armor. like. I can't actually describe what I was thinking with the doors, but they're mm. like, they're the guys that you go to college with, who like wear the Thor's hammer like on a chain around their neck, and they're into like heavy metal and like you know, they're like hardcore and they like go hiking a lot, but they're still like playing like tabletop games and yeah, like, they I, know dwarf and runes they can ride in it. It's a very specific, but it's like you know one of those. I, I know, know one exactly of exactly what you you're might talking be one about. Of those. So, <laughs> yeah, these, I, oh my God, they remind me of a couple of guys that you'd meet at the youth hostel when you're backpacking <laughs> in Australia. That is some fan art. That's not That's, what I did. Oh, very this is This is Bilbo. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, in his basement apartment where Bilbo lives. Yes. With his illicit... <laughs> That is a, uh, a vase, a decorative vase. Yeah, that's that's a, a, that's an alchemy implement. Uh, this is a Hobbit Halloween costume. The children who are watching our show, give a hoot. <laughs> There's my public service announcement for the day. Bread. So that oh, has um, potatoes. <laughs> yes. Potato. Potato. You have to write potato across the front because otherwise. No one. I don't know. You might not get it. No, I got they it. Would think it was a, a troll book. Potato. I, as soon as you go like, what is that? <laughs> Uh, this is, um, I think, I don't know if actually this was before or after the Thranduil image was released, so I don't know if I knew oh, what he looked look like at yet. Brows. I just drew Lee Pace and I put some, like, blonde hair on oh, him, because okay. I figured he'd have blonde hair. It's a, and, perfect, uh, it's a perfect recreation for <laughs> Lee Pace brows. Oh, I think I probably did know, because his, like, shirt is the same color as his, uh, as his robe, so I'd probably seen a picture by then. Nice, yeah, a little light green. Archery light green. practice. <laughs> Legolas would just not be into partying as much as his dad is. Like his dad is like, let's do the conga. He's like, no, I have to go like shoot orcs. He's like, no, let's do the conga. <laughs> so it's the it's the opposite. <laughs> the son is focused <laughs> yes, on his career, exactly. and the father. Just, this one's my favorite. It's kind of accurate to the movie. <laughs> Good. Yeah. This is my favorite. Eowyn. Eowyn, Eowyn knocking got, out the witch king. Is she wearing a sleeveless leather vest and jeans? Yes. Is that Eowyn? Yes. So this is like you know Portland version of Eowyn. Mm -hmm. So Mandia. she could be like kind of in like <laughs> disguise. She probably has like her biker helmet on before this and like maybe the vest closed up so you can't see that she's a lady mm. and then whoa dang she's a lady punches you in your in your face with <laughs> she pulls help her from biker Mary. helmet off. I yes. love it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's great. Uh, with her leather mitts. Yes. Her little fingerless biker gloves which yeah. all hardcore people wear it's it true good. you put fingerless gloves on you're automatically you're automatically 50 hardcore. Percent more hardcore yeah than no you it's were. just how it works it just i remember how i dressed works. as ash for halloween one year when i was like eight put the fingerless gloves on way more hardcore way more hardcore you could was, go out and catch like so many pokemans so many people in the chat room are now clicking like oh my god i used to look at this page uh, <laughs> it's clicked now they're like who is this girl what is she doing here <laughs> exactly. now you know Yes, yeah, so here's Arwen um, introducing <laughs> her boyfriend to her dad. <laughs> I have fun drawing Elrond. Father, because he's like Father does not approve. <laughs> oh my god, you got his widow's seat <laughs> and everything. He would totally be like, I, I don't know, like a really uptight dad, but he'd also like tell dad jokes, you know, and like be <laughs> like all up on Arwen's case. He'd like come into her room without knocking, yes. and like he'd probably borrow her shirts too. Totally, just, yeah, J. Crew dad. Yeah. Your <laughs> <laughs> I love it. He's like, who is this boy? He's all unkempt and unshaven. <laughs> I'm not approved. There's That's, the van. That one's gonna be kind of, kind of. Let me see. I can make that bigger. Maybe, possibly. Technology. 
There it goes. Oh, it's oh, taking a moment. Oh. All right, this, so the van is Shadow Facts. I know that the entire fellowship does not ride around on <laughs> Shadow Facts. It just worked in this case. Could have done Build a Pony, but I decided that Build a Pony was Sam's bike mm. that he broke very early in the journey. So mm. this is Shadow Facts. And it does not start up very smoothly. <laughs> That's fun. I like that, though. Some, I mean, you're never going to be able to, to fit it 100%. You just have to, to make do... Not even make them. Yeah. You just have to fill in the, the gaps that don't completely match up. That was another cosplay group. That's great. Very fun. <laughs> Very fun. What, did you draw these at college? Or? Yeah, I was a sophomore when I drew these. Yeah, wow. that was like three years ago. Yeah, this is the what I was talking about with the bouncer and, <laughs> and the Maria. Bouncer the ball rod. Yes. So there's this funky looking guy who is... Yes. <laughs> the bouncer. That guy with the red shades. He's got like orange sideburns because I wanted to show the Balrog's horns in there somehow. Mm. And then it's like red glasses, like his red eyes. And yeah, he just looks pretty, pretty strange. But it's really, really funny <laughs> when you think at the very last panel. Oh, hey, look at this. <laughs> this <show is> looks <laughs> white. What do you know? <laughs> and he's got to like call, call his friends like the Eagles to come and like pick him up. But the Eagles, I don't the know who the Eagles band. are. <laughs> the Eagles, it's the actual band. They come and get him. Like, go, hey, old, that old gal. Band would be friends We totally just Eagles. used to like hang out in, in, our, in our hotel room in <laughs> yeah, the old hey, days. Man. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, wait, they actually left me here. <laughs> <laughs> and the Balrog is still there too. Like he's not like <laughs> subdued at all. He's just like, he's just like, okay, I'm wet. I guess I got to stop fighting. <laughs> My <about."> leather's ruined. <laughs> So, there's full pages that are really hysterical. Can people uh, buy any art from you? On your um, yeah, I sell I sell some brochure art on my shop. There's a link to it on my blog as well, up near the top where my links are. Mm -hmm. There's a, a little shop links link, not links, here. Oh yeah, there you go, shop. So up it's here. on imprint, and um, yes, I will buy like so many prints from this from this iPad, and then I'll get lots of money. That's how that works. <laughs> yes. Everybody Put it on the one ring dot net yeah. tab. All right. So this is uh this is my, just yeah. Well, that shows that. That's oh, my. That's my shot. Great, great stuff. Your your style of illustration is so whimsical and so so fun. I really appreciate what you're doing, and well, I'm really you. glad you're here with us, sharing our enthusiasm for fantasy storytelling and for dragons and everything that we love about Tolkien. But there is something that I want to talk about, and it it will not ruin your experience at all but something is Again, going to be about the second movie hmm. <laughs> well, listen, let me tell you something <laughs> my wish scares are telling me something, something <laughs> is going to happen in the public conversation amongst all of us especially as we go into the new year with WonderCon being right around the corner as our first convention engagement of 2014 mm -hmm. where the OneRing.net will certainly be a presence and then we've got to go on to other conventions you know and, and do our co get our get together our outfits with our cosplay friends Everyone's going to be together. Everyone's going to be discussing this. And I wonder how it's going to polarize fans, if it will at all, that there are interesting... Is it, is it Tariel? Well, it's not necessarily just Tariel. There's all kinds of things going on in oh, the Oh, I story. thought there was one specific thing that you were... Oh, no, just to. yeah. The differences. Okay. Well, ta okay. Tariel is one of many ingredients in the mix that lets you realize we're, we're, you know, we're in new territory now with Peter's mm -hmm. films. Are you, are you pro or against? Yeah, uh, yeah. Pro, pro Tariel. Yeah. Yeah. Pro. I thought she was a very welcome addition. Good. Evangeline provides a really, really lovely and uh, uh, an interesting energy to the whole film. Um, I do not begrudge her being there at all. I still have question marks over the top of my head. If I were a cartoon, I'd still have a word bubble <laughs> over me. And then what, by the time the film is over, I still have question marks about the decisions that the writers made yeah. with the story and exactly ah. what choices they made with plot, which I won't reveal anything of. But the fact that the character is there... Yeah, well, the fact that they were setting up the great. love triangle in the trailer, especially, I was just like, ugh, I hate love triangles as a general rule. Yeah. I'm not against... I knew they were going to do the, like... I don't think this is a spoiler, because it's been announced for a while, but, like, the Keeley-Tariel romance 
angle, and then they like it was like a love triangle, and I was just Aiden, like Aiden I, Aiden Turner spilled the beans on that about a year and a half. Ago yeah, yeah. So that's that's some, old news. In some interview, and I'm not Empire against magazine. it. I think that's actually a cool way to have. I mean, they're probably doomed lovers. Maybe I don't know. I don't know how they're gonna do that. No, but it like seems well, like something that's like a Romeo and Juliet you know type thing. Yeah. Here's an interesting thing. When I read my review in the Hollywood Reporter. They said it was just a radi radicalization of Tolkien at all that the thing, the essence of sexual attrac attraction would even exist in his stories when they do not. Generally, love and romance and lust from the, and romantic sweet rendezvous, are not, it's not Tolkien's flavor. No. He doesn't provide his stories with that kind of stuff. So the fact that there would be any dynamic like that, the Hollywood Reporter said, is a radicalization enough to tilt this bit of filmmaking over in another direction. And I think that's fascinating. Worthy of discussion, but I won't reveal how much or what is in the air. I don't, I can't even, by the time the film is over, I can't even tell if it's a romance or not. But there's all kinds of interesting dynamics with these characters, and why not? If you can have a man and an elf in a cross-racial relationship in this mythology, why can you not possibly have any other type of cross racial romances someone's in this gotta world. someone's gotta blaze the path for Legolas and Gimli to be together forever <laughs> <laughs> settle <laughs> down <laughs> domestic partners Plastic that's actually canon ever. though come on they move into a house together they, they build a eight. boat together so, yes, they, they sail they to can. the gray havens together yes, they are married <laughs> <laughs> that is, they that have that hobbit you, babies that that they have true. foster oh hobbit my. babies exactly. oh my they just raised in their long <laughs> life they raised so many oh groups my. of hot babies. <laughs> I want to do Professor Farnsworth for Futurama. Oh my! But I mean, really, Tolkien was about like, I mean, he, he wrote it that way on purpose. He was very much about the like, deep b male friendships and that were like kind of transcended any other relationships you could have because that was like his experience you know mm -hmm. his closest friends his closest mm -hmm. relationships were with other men so that was like that's what he focuses on in Lord of the Rings and it's just like whether or not I mean he didn't intend it to be sexual I don't think he was very interested in that at all for his stories but right. I think that like Legolas and Gimli are that's their relationship like that's yeah. they don't have any other love interests like that's they end up together. So basically. what 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 you've learned from the trailer? Um, did you see any of the teaser trailer uh, or any of the material where uh, uh, Lee Pace is as Thranduil is having a conversation with uh, Tauriel and telling her, you know, um, have you you haven't heard any of this stuff, so I better stop the conversation now. Um, I saw it in the trailer. But yeah, I, I, I vaguely remember something. There's like a little boy. He's like, you know, don't give him a sense of false hope. Yeah. You know, yeah. Speaking of, of Legolas. Well, there's a little bit of real life in Tolkien's world, which is, is reflected in that, where the love of Professor Tolkien's life when he was very young was Edith, and Edith was a Protestant girl, mm -hmm. and Tolkien was being raised by a foster father who happened to be a Roman Catholic priest, and Tolkien was forbidden in the same way that Thranduil is telling Tauriel, you know, uh-uh, don't give my son any false hope, you know, because Legolas oh. has an eye for you, you know. It's well, a, that's there's, really cool. There's some interesting, and I think the writers are going into some interesting places, although it is certainly not in the pages of this book. Mm -hmm. It does not exist in they here. They know what they're doing. But still, there are reflections of other characters and themes. Yeah. There are really strong parallels that we'll talk about later after the film is out. Mm -hmm. um, and I hope it doesn't count as repetition. But to some people that might say, oh, you know, there's repetition of things we've seen in Lord of the Rings, but maybe we'll see. I, I find it fascinating that Professor Tolkien had to deal with his true love being someone who was withheld from him for a long time. And he did build that into the Aragorn and Arwen structure. Elrond, half-elven, was completely disapproving of that match. Yes. And that's what <laughs> Tolkien lived in his real life. Well, it's really so funny. It's in there. With, like, the, it's with in there. the Thranduil thing, he's like, you can't date my son because, you know, he is, like, Protestant. a higher <laughs> elf <laughs> case than you. You are, is like, a low why? elf. Is that why? Well, oh, what? With the yeah, well, he, d he thinks she's too lowly of an elf to be, Whoa. To be rendezvousing with yeah. his son. But she's then it's, like, elf. Tariel ends oh. up going for Keeley, which is just like, that's, that's just gotta, I think that's how Thrundle dies. His head's just gonna explode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, she's not like, okay, father. I'm about she's to like, all right, don't worry. Rebel. I would never, wait, I would no. never cross the class oh, lines. Wait, wait, okay. Let me tell you something. By the time this film gets out in theaters, there's gonna be a lot of fans' heads exploding. It's gonna be like scandal. Hopefully in a good way. Just, oh, in a great way. <laughs> in a great way because you guys are invited back to please come back and have some more conversation about 
what you know what we're doing there and, and, and uh, what you feel your response to it yeah I'm more interested in the response from fans than I am in the box office performance or the awards uh, acclaim of this film. Mm. Usually, I'm interested in how many awards are they going to get this time, or you know how many critics are going to be blown away. Well, all you can hear in, in the conventional wisdom right now is people saying, oh, it's better than AUJ. It's better than the first Hobbit film. That's all people are generally saying. Huh. An improvement over the first film. Good. Yes, but still, I want everyone to be prepared that fans are going to be talking about how the story changes affect the overall movie experience. Mm -hmm. That's interesting to me. That's your opinion. I disagree. It's a great film. Justin <laughs> disagrees completely, and he thinks the most interesting thing is that it's just a great film. Yeah. Are you now convinced, Mr. Justin, and can you go back on some of the things you've said over the past months, that Mr. Lucas and Mr. Jackson have a little bit too much in common with oh, prequel-itis? So yeah. Prequel-itis? You call it prequel-itis. Oh, yeah. You actually named an episode of our show prequelitis because that's what we were talking about at the time so after seeing the second film is there less or is there more prequelitis more. there's more but it's good there's but more good but it's way. good yeah. he says there's more prequelitis but it's good I don't know I can't compare Attack of the Clones to the Desolation of Smaug they're not <laughs> Desolation of Smaug is a much 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 better and more satisfying film <laughs> well, Attack of, the, Attack of the, the Clones wasn't sitting around for 75 years being wait to Thank you. waiting to be made into a waiting movie. Made. I will give George Lucas credit that in Attack of the Clones, he started playing with some threads of story and this weird Machiavellian plot that Darth Sidious was putting together, you know, i.e. Palpatine. That was a little bit interesting to watch, but otherwise... Uh, Hayden Christensen having a romance with <laughs> Natalie Portman, <laughs> who was, you know, about as wooden as Pinocchio and with early morning, excuse me. But anyways, <laughs> not, <laughs> not, not my idea of prequelitis. Revelation <laughs> of Smaug is so much, much, much better. <laughs> so much better. Come <laughs> well, on, That's Justin. good to hear. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> just, just saying. I'm just saying. Back to the recurring <laughs> themes, <laughs> where you were saying about the first... Um, an unexpected journey having reoccurring themes that Fellowship had. Mm -hmm. um, I, I agree with that. And I think why... The moth, for example. The moth, the whole general sense of you know, like rocks falling on yeah, us and yeah. mm -hmm. going yeah. into mm -hmm. Moria and going, you know, they both went into caves at one point. They were both running from wargs on planes at one point. Yep. A lot of similar scenarios. Mm -hmm. But I, and but I think why it, it it tended to fall flat in unexpected journey is the stakes weren't as high. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where in Lord of the Rings, everything is on the line. And two lead characters die in Fellowship of the Ring. Yeah. While in fe in, in unexpected journey, no one dies. Yeah. Well, hmm. You're right. It's interesting, I isn't it? Forgot that Gandalf died. Yeah, Gandalf and Boromir both die in the Fellowship of the Ring. So. Oh. Oh, I'll just get my groove on. And, and a bad guy died. Wow, someone's flipping channels faster than a, you know, 10-year-old on Ritalin. What is this? Down the, there. The, the big orc? Yeah, right? Didn't he die? What? Azog? Yeah, yeah, no, no. no. In, Who? In, in, in Fellowship. Fellowship. In, in Fellowship? Oh, Lurtz. Yeah. Lurtz. Lurtz. Yeah, Lurtz. Lurtz, who is your surrogate a villain. A mean orc for, man. Yeah, mean orc... Uh, Breeding goblin men and he's like the only one who's like breeding. he's he's like an okay guy for an orc you know <laughs> he does his job well that's like the most you can hope for from an orc like he'd open his suitcase and it's just like well, meat man fillets like what am I gonna it was also a lot of conversation of how Lurtz who is a fully realized physical effect and a physical uh, actor yeah. compares to all CGI versus okay. Azog I hated that's Azog another reason in the first why movie. an unexpected journey Sorry. had a bad comparison yeah. I, he just looked so CGI to me in an unexpected journey. Like World of Warcraft. he looked like a video game his villain, meals. and and I just I didn't understand because it's like and then in like Return of the King they had what's his face with the bubble face bubble face guy, and like this is very loud music. He was just like obviously was a guy in prosthetics, so it's like why why was it not something that they would <laughs> do for Azog as well? Like it doesn't yeah. seem that it would be that hard. Yeah. Compared to some of the other effects that they did. Well, there's there's an interesting thing going on with the inclusion of all these CG orc faces and CG orcs instead of the physical effects makeup. And yeah, uh-huh, Kanye, right. 
Hennessy, Taylor Swift, Bumble <laughs> Face, like, uh, Kanye. You have to do the rest of the podcast this way. I, I couldn't. Just, yeah, you just have try. to sing it to whatever is going I on. I am not going to even try. touch that because it would be, yeah. Yeah. It would, I just, yeah. I can't. I still cannot believe the gall of that man interrupting Taylor Swift when she's giving her. A <laughs> I mean, I'm going back years. The wound is still fresh. The wound is still <laughs> yeah, fresh. Still wounds. What? A it's salt unhealed. In the what wound. a douche! Oh my gosh. Anyway, anyways, I like his music, but he's still a douche. All right. But anyway, I've got a list of things that, in my mind, I'm wondering about this second film, and I, they would be easily answered by a yes or no. But I don't want you to say anything. I just want to run down them and throw it out there. Run them down. Okay. One. I wonder if the animals in Bjorn's household will walk around and serve the dishes. I was. He was. He's wondering too. I was always wondering that too. Yes. We've been talking about that for months. Like, are they going to serve catering service? Two. I've always wondered that. Will the spiders in Mirkwood speak three yeah that was a voiceover job i wanted from a long time ago <laughs> being one of those spiders go ahead Doug. will bomber speak when he awakes from his enchanted sleep from falling in the stream because he doesn't talk up until that and in my mind i've said this before if he doesn't speak then he will not speak the rest of the film unless it's maybe did to bomber say not s- speak in the first one no really not a peep not nope. at all not a peep. Not even in the extended. Not, not. Un- he just broke things with his girth. Not, he's not even the one with an axe in his head who has a reason for not speaking. That's yeah. Biffer. Yeah, Biffer. Yeah, but here's the thing. Keep those doors straight. I've learned a couple of inter- interesting secrets by watching the closed caption turned on on my Hobbit and Unexpected Journey. Oh, ho. Bombor actually has two lines of dialogue. Huh. If the people who were doing the transcribing are correct. Oh, if so he's just correct. not on screen. Yeah, yeah. Bomber is they? a voice you'll hear when the trolls have uh, captured the dwarves and put them in sacks, and some of them are roasting on the spit, and Bilbo makes this joke about, you know, uh, you're going to have to do a lot of prep to plate this lot up, talking about how to cook dwarves, and he Bilbo makes the joke, you're going to have to skin them first. He says that. You will hear Bomber loudly say, Traitor! <laughs> among other dwarves, <laughs> shouting, you know, exclamatory okay, things. so we know that he does not want to be skinned. Bom- one Bomber has we know about one Bomber. word. What was the other one? I forget. I think it's somewhere. Oh, so it's I think it's somewhere bird? in. The, I think it's somewhere in the Goblin Town mm-hmm. scenes, where he says somewhere like, "Look out!" or "Quick!" or some exclamation, which is not really. Oh, rump. Rump. Yeah, <laughs> rump. It's not even a line of dialogue. But if you add all those oh. things together, he's still in under five, mm-hmm. which is an acting term for Los Angeles actors mm. who book a role on a mm-hmm. movie, but they don't have any dialogue, under or five. they have no real speaking parts. They just have under five sentences which means they're not allowed to be paid under union auspices bec- or whatever it is it depends if you've got an under five role tears of it tears of payment and it's how the union tears treats you as an actor to payment. T- yeah this is yeah. Yeah. Payment. when you have an under five <laughs> when you have an under five and you've got five lines yeah when you when, but when you're like one of the lead 13 dwarves and you've only got two words in the whole movie but then i wrote an email to my friend at warner brothers home video and she said it's not necessarily so that bomber is the character being a Attributed with that exclamatory remark. <sighs> Sometimes the transcribers get it wrong. But, anyways, those questions are interesting and they remain unanswered, Doug. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of Peter Jackson? What if, what if the spiders don't talk and the animals don't serve? Um, I mean, I. Rip up your right. I, yeah, I, I, I can't make a judgment right now because, in my mind, if the spiders don't talk, they don't talk in a Doug way. <laughs> Not in a Peter Jackson way. You know what I'm saying? Do they talk my in a bro interpre- way? My <laughs> way? Well, if, 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 I, if I'm talking to both Boys. of you, and I, said, and I said, okay, guys, so the spiders don't talk. That means they will interact in a different way, um, and they will get their intent across differently to the dwarves than saying, like, oh, we're going to get you, or however they would talk. I don't know, but I can't make a judgment based on that because... Peter Jackson's interpretation of silent spiders is different than my interpretation of silent spiders. Okay, what about like the like Tariel? You know Tariel. Right. It's pronounced 
Tario. 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 Smell. Smell. I want to know if, if Peter Jackson has the same impediment with every it, it other word in English Tario. When he says schmaug, you want to say schmaug, does he talk like that all the time? Schmaug. Like, I'm going to go outside <laughs> and have a schmoke. <laughs> schmoke. Excuse a me for a minute, I'm going to go outside and have a schmoke. <laughs> he doesn't. What? He always says schmaug. Why, Peter? Why? But why, Peter? Okay, what? anyways, back to Justin. It's Tario. But do you though. think do, do you appreciate Peter Jackson adding stuff that shouldn't be there? It's not that it shouldn't be there. Well, it's no. just not that it's not written in there. There's then that's that's the tipping point for some fans. Yeah, that's the only distinction that matters. Right, right. I can get the fact that there are two people like it's not in the book. It shouldn't be in the movie. But at the same time. He made such a rich world mm -hmm. who's saying that she didn't ever exist. Let's talk about the prologue. The prologue is a big piece of a Peter Jackson Middle Earth film that we always look forward to. There's always an opening seven minutes, mm -hmm. which is set apart from the main narrative. Ooh, this and it's, should be a good it's one. always done in a spectacular, interesting way. And the stuff in this prologue comes directly from the appendix, the appendices in *The Lord of the Rings*. It's real Tolkien. It really happened. It's beautifully done. I really liked it. But it's still different. It's a real departure from other type prologues he has done before. Is but I appreciate the fact that it's really true to the source. I have to say. Is it? Um, no spoilers. No spoilers. <laughs> uh, Fellowship, the the. Hello, Brighter Moon. Welcome to the Prologue and, and <laughs> Fellowship and Two Towers. One was very informative. The other one was very action-packed. Yeah. And we expect yeah. that same return of the first one was informative. Erebor, did a ball hammers. This next one. Okay. It's There's more of Return of the King's Prologue. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily. Well, let's just that, say. That's as close as you get. All right. I, I'll I, take that. Yeah. I, well, it's. <clears throat> It's, no it's beast of burden here. Like, uh, we, yeah, these characters are all introduced, and he's just uh, Peter's just ready to go and tell the story now. And um, I would, I will, I will just say it's it's really going to be such a cool show next week. Same torn time and same torn channel when you guys are here with us to talk about after the film is out. We're going to talk about how many times you've seen it, how many times you plan on seeing it, certainly based upon your initial reaction, and. Yeah, but, uh, the fact the is, saying the pro prologue is great in this one. The prologue. Okay. Who says that? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well, thank you, you so streamer four two zero six two four. Who says that? I want to because I want to talk. I want to talk, to, I wanna talk to my fans live on the show. That's why we do this show. The, uh, oh no! Don't 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 speak it. The people in the chat are actually spoiling it now. What? Well, don't read well, the screen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, guys. So you, you guys in the chat room are spoiling it. Some of these people huh? really don't want to know. I can't say whether I approve. Like, I can't. I can't answer that until I see the film. That's like that's asking me to. You yeah. okay? You show me a slice of cake and you say, "What do you think of this cake?" <laughs> ba ta what? How does this cake taste? <laughs> I can't. I can't tell you until I eat the cake. Like I bet, like it could taste really good. It like looks it looks good. like it. It could taste really good, but like maybe it's actually made yeah. of poop. You don't like. Yeah. It could look like chocolate, but. <laughs> okay, okay. They, you, they look the same like from distance. Uh, remember when we talked to Dino, the Dino guy? Yeah. And he went on. We talked to him at length about women and Tolkien and everything. Remember that? Guy? Yeah, he went real deep. <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> we have to go deeper. But, but he, even he was said, uh, Dino Bob, Dr. Robert Becker. He said he, you, you that met women have a role, and Tolkien just didn't write any women because that was a product of his time. Oh, uh, yeah. Right? It's true. Right. I, I, I agree with that. Well, now you've got a three-person writing team, and two mm -hmm. of the three writers are women here mm. with these films. But, like, here's the thing. with so like with, it's with, going to be different. With Middle Earth, at least two of these people, like, men, the race of men clearly have, like, their very defined gender roles. And that's what Eowyn has to overcome in her arc. Mm -hmm. Dwarves and elves don't have those gender roles. Like, they are very similar, men and women, in both of those societies. So, like, mm. why aren't, like, would it have, like, what if one of the doors in the company is female? We don't even know they're female because they have a beard. They look exactly like everyone else. You're, right? You know, Nicole has advocated that very point as recently as just a few weeks ago. And I, I love that point. 
That's a really interesting somebody, thought. Somebody suggested why couldn't Peter Jackson have really radically adapted and included at least one female dwarf in the company? Why not? Would that have been cool? I would have thought it was cool. That I want to see cool? a female dwarf. We saw him a little bit. They had just like little beards, <laughs> but I want like a full beard. Now I want to go back through The Hobbit and look at every time one of the dwarves say something and then when they're referenced again in the first person mm-hmm. to make sure that they're all... Constantly <laughs> male. You're like, okay, they can't Ori's possibly talking. use pronouns Key. for all of them. What if Keely is secretly a woman dwarf? And, and there, so then and there Keely, Keely, Keely Tyrell Keely. post or like, wow. or like <laughs> biracial couple slash lesbian couple of Middle Earth. Bam, done, slaying, fixed it slaying. for you. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I My love next it. viewing just got better. <laughs> <laughs> it did. Just it put really those beliefs did. in place. <laughs> <laughs> That's excellent. That's excellent. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> well, Doug, remember at, at Dragon Con, we had the whole company of doors. Oh, yeah. Right? And they were it like, was awesome. But they were all... They were all... Yeah, it was awesome. They had the whole company of dwarves, and they were all... Aw- per- beautiful, immaculate cosplay. Just the armor, the weapons, and then, yeah, they're all women, and they're kicking ass. It's true. That's why awesome. Do you, why do you think girls are dressing up like dwarves? Like, mm-hmm. Why not? Yeah. They look cool. Because the whole bearded lady thing is something that's fun to play with. It's a bit of old Americana pop culture that easily cross blends with Tolkien with now that we know that dwarves do have the facial hair it's so funny it's a perfect crossover the old <coughs> carnival you know uh, bearded lady thing yeah, yeah, yeah. Lady. I love it I think it's fun but it's also like people want to have like options for who they dress up as so it's like if you're a girl and you have to dress up as like a woman from Tolkien or oh. you know you could dress up as an elf probably fairly easily and a lot of people do but it's like you want to have more like stuff to, to play with there, you know? So it's like, you can be Eowyn, you can be Arwen, you can be Tariel, you can be Gladriel, and it's like, all right, but what if I don't want to wear, like, a long dress and, like, you know, ha- wear, <laughs> like, look beautiful? Maybe I want to, like, be this rough and tumble, like, yeah. beardy, hairy person, yeah. like, covered in skins with an axe. Like, maybe that's what appeals to me. And there aren't any... Oh, that's what appeals to this guy. Yeah, yeah. So that's probably what appealed to those cosplayers, too. It's true. Excellent. Excellent. I, I love cosplay. I love seeing that kind of creativity on parade. I love it. So we're going to have a lot more. We're going to have people as Tariel. We're going to have uh, Bard, and we're going to have the Master of Lake Town, who is so wonderful, uh, by Stephen Fry. We're going to oh, see. Oh, I forgot about that. There's going to be so much new cosplay. Oh yeah, Stephen Fry. Oh, it's going to be so Fry. great. <laughs> that is going to be the cosplay that I want to recreate the most because it's oh, wonderful. He's it's so like, doofy. He's and he's so Dickensian and over the top and yeah. wonderful and wonderful. I love he's what a he's goober. doing. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, I'm down for some new cosplay uh, that will be derived from new characters and new things. Um, I don't know if we're going to see much of a Bayorn, but if anybody does, it will be immediately recognizable. Yeah. With this hairpiece going all the way down his back. That's going to be really cool. Um, oh. I'm thinking now. I'm starting to think about Dragon Con. Starting to make plans for what I want to wear for Dragon yeah. Con. <laughs> yeah, I still I I follow Dragon Con still on Twitter, and every few days it's yes. 264 days till Dragon Con. 264 I think I'll days this year. Home. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I hope so. It was a lot of fun. My first convention. That's what I that I fun. saw the photos yeah. and I was first just fun. like, this looks really fun, and Dragon. I wanted to go to there. You're a perfect fit for that world. Perfect yeah. fit for that. I Thank felt you. I felt at home. Sh- should we get a full bus and do the caravan? Again? Yeah, why not? Let's. We're, we. I think we should make designs to rent a coach and take that coach and drive across country and pick everyone up along the way. <laughs> Can <laughs> we name the coach right. Shadowfax? Yeah, yeah, of course we'll we just would. <laughs> get one of those forty-foot moving trucks. <laughs> Everyone can have a strap to hold on to. <laughs> the VW bus, oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Push it to start. Uh huh. <laughs> oh and actually camp this time. I love it. Yes. That's great. Uh, one of the uh, questions just came on the Torn Hotline. Did you see Peter Jackson's cameo in The Desolation of Smaug? And I, I could if say. If you miss it, you're blind. If you miss it, you're. you're that, if you miss it, you have obviously arrived at the theater way too late. <laughs> you know, a Peter Not Peter, ruling that out. His his cameo is that out? his cameo in, 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 in ah, an ah, unexpected ah, journey. Ah, 
Uh, His cameo in an unexpected oh. Oh, journey okay. no, was okay. not obvious. Let me talk, people. I actually don't remember him from an unexpected journey. Exactly. Maybe I missed him altogether. Who it is he? Well, really, is really not obvious. Peter Jackson's cameo in AUJ A-U-J. is really, really not easy to see until you find a photo reference to it on the internet, and then go back and freeze frame. And you'll be like, "Oh Lord, there he is." But in an un- in the Desolation of Smaug, you will see Peter right away. It is telegraphed very visually. Hi, I'm here, like you know, Alfred Hitchcock. Like Alfred Hitchcock getting on the bloody bus in North by Northwest. There he is. There's Hitch. And, there, and then he's gone. Anyways, but uh, I love that movie. Now, guys, it looks like we're going to wrap up the show in just a, a minute or what? two. We've only got a few minutes left. Any last minute questions? Anybody else down here? Say, Doug needs to come back. So. Yes, he will. <laughs> Doug will. All, and, you know, and we're going to have Noelle come back. Noelle, you're here in the LA area. I am. I am. I'm like... Fabulous. I'm like 10 minutes from here. Are you so. glad to have left Maryland ah. uh, weather oh, yes. in exchange for this winter weather? Yes. Yeah, our, our winter Definitely. weather today was what? 64, 65 degrees. Mm-hmm. They're, getting, they're getting a snowpocalypse over there on the East Coast. I and I'm know. like, hey, suckers. I live up in, in the Northern Valley. It was a little colder than that. A little nippy. Right. I had to put on like a little jacket. Rep in Northern San Fernando Seriously? Valley. You want to swing by Oregon? Yeah, we'll swing by Oregon. We'll go right up to Portlandia. And we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll pick up hipster Arwen. Aha. Uh-huh. done grinding her beans. We'll go right through Oregon. <laughs> we'll go up to Seattle. She'll show me how to make fingerless leather gloves. Yes. <laughs> fingerless Hand leather tooled. gloves. Yeah, Leather Ooh, Fagan. Those would be perfect for a road trip, too. That's yeah. going to be <laughs> that's gonna be the name of my next band, Leather Fagans. <laughs> yeah, that's the name of my next in- indie band, Leather Fagans. <laughs> I love it. We have to work on the muffin mantra. Okay. Something that Bilbo... Is it going to be like a full like, song that we can like chant oh, as we no, go? I just thought it would be a cute little one-panel thing that you might play. Oh, okay. I, mean, <laughs> I realized from the 1977 film there's something, something so charming about Bilbo and the way he reminds himself of bacon and eggs and lemon cakes and he keeps reminding himself of things that he loves as even when he's walking down into the dragon's lair <laughs> yeah. sort of like, you know he's mumbling yeah. to himself the things he wants to crumpets you know. and jam yeah. Yeah. some people are like, apple, tart. Bath. A- apple tart and my fire a roaring yeah. fire and then, and then but in this film our approach to everything is is you know it, the charm has been replaced with action and a build a build up of great tension good it's a really fun right. movie you guys are going to enjoy the desolation of smaug I know many of you are going to be um, of, of uh, a different opinion, and I'm going to be so happy to engage you fans on my Twitter feed. Follow us at The Wondering Net. Follow me at QuickBeam2000. Follow uh, Ginger Hayes. That's at Ginger Hayes. At Ginger Hazing. Is it Ginger Because as we established, a stoner stole Ginger Hayes. <laughs> as established uh, earlier in the episode. Ginger Hazing. <laughs> Ginger Hazing. Hazing. Yes. Okay. And, and Mr. Brochu, we follow you at... At Dougie Fresh. D U G Y Fresh. D U G Y Fresh. D U G Y Fresh. I love it. Someday Follow I me. will have a blue check mark of my own. Uh, well, I'm going to ask you. And my life will be perfect. <laughs> yes. I need to validate <laughs> myself. I need validation. I need validation. Show me that I'm real. I don't, that I'm I don't not know. an impulse are you in my own life. Are you guys real humans? <laughs> I, don't, I don't sense the blue check mark within you. I'm a hologram. Sent from the future. These are not Show the blue the check way. marks you're looking for. <laughs> oh, here we go, guys. But we, we have a lot to talk about. F- join us on Twitter and on our Facebook page. Click like on Facebook and, and join the ranks of Tolkien fans who are talking on our message boards, active on thewondering.net. Join us for line parties. We've got a big line party happening at every theater around the country. You guys, we love having you here. Thanks again for being on our show, Thank Noel. Thank you. So awesome to have you. Mr. Doug, <laughs> you gotta, you got to stop. <laughs> I, love it. I love these kids. This is awesome. And I am Clifford Broadway Quick Bean signing off. And I encourage you to check out the first half of hand. my spoiler-free review. <laughs> and thank you, Justin. Nice. Thank you for helping put us this, this show together. Thank you, Justin. Ladies and gentlemen, enjoy the theatrical experience. We'll see you after the theater. We'll see you there on tour. We'll be there. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.